It's almost a year since we released our What is a DPU and Why Does It Matter video. And the SmartNIC market shows no signs of slowing down as more and more applications become software defined. So for this, the latest in our Tech Explained series, we're going to be taking a look at FPGAs. What are they? What do they do? And why you might want one. We've added a link to the DPU video in the description below if you haven't seen that one. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Alternatively, you can leave a question or a comment below for the Scan IT team to come back to you on. So first of all, let's start with a quick recap to set the scene. A traditional server NIC has the job of communicating with the network switches and passing the packets of data to the host CPU for processing. Above 10 gigabit network speeds, the influx of data packets starts to impact the CPU's ability to do this and run all the system applications effectively. So smart NICs were developed that offloaded the work from the CPU. Using technologies such as RDMA and Rocky, offloading enables servers to communicate with less latency and higher throughputs by not taking up CPU and operating system resources. Further increases in network speed and the evolution of software-defined technologies drove the advent of data processing units or DPUs. And these are not only capable of offloading, but can also process the additional overhead of management software and acts like an endpoint within the server to keep the system CPU and memory free of any storage or networking tasks. If there's a requirement for very bespoke applications, then the various acceleration engines can be replaced with an FPGA, which allows for the highest levels of customization and introducing environment-specific acceleration and optimization. So what exactly is an FPGA? Well, it stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, and it's an integrated circuit that consists of internal hardware blocks with user programmable interconnects to customize operation for a specific application. The interconnects can readily be reprogrammed, allowing an FPGA to accommodate changes to a design or even support a new application during the lifetime of the part. And this ability to configure the hardware of the FPGA, reconfigure it when needed, and optimize it for a particular set of functions makes FPGAs an attractive option in many data center applications. In contrast, smart NICs and DPUs are designed around an ASIC, or application-specific integrated circuit. So FPGAs are often used to provide a custom solution in situations in which developing an ASIC would be too expensive or too time-consuming. An FPGA application can be configured in hours or days instead of months. But it must be said that this flexibility does come at a price, as an FPGA is likely to be slower and require more transistors, therefore consuming more power than an equivalent ASIC as that's been designed and optimized for a specific application. Interestingly, even when an ASIC is being designed for high volume production, FPGAs are widely used for system validation, both pre-silicon and post-silicon and firmware development, as this allows manufacturers to verify their designs before the chip is finalized and produced in the factory. A growing number of applications rely on the parallel execution of identical operations. So the ability to configure an FPGA into hundreds or thousands of identical processing blocks like a GPU has uses for workflows including image processing, AI, aerospace and defense, cybersecurity, enterprise networking, automotive advanced driver assistance systems and wireless communications. Many of these industry sectors are evolving so quickly as new protocols and standards are adopted. So FPGAs may be seen as an alternative to ASIC-based GPUs as they enable manufacturers to implement systems that can be updated as necessary. It's also worth pointing out that programming an FPGA is not for the faint-hearted as it requires both coding skills and a detailed knowledge of the underlying hardware. Although FPGA manufacturers do provide SDKs that allow designers to develop FPGAs FPGA solutions in popular high-level languages such as C, C++, Python and OpenCL. It is usually in the realm of enterprise organizations where FPGA use is concentrated as they're able to invest in both skill sets and resource. Now, as we mentioned, there are a number of FPGA products on the market at present from brands including Intel, AMD Xilinx and Micron, although confusingly, and perhaps unsurprisingly for the IT industry, they aren't all simply called an FPGA card. 
Intel has developed a range of IPUs or infrastructure processing units, some of which use Stratix 10 or Agile XF FPGA circuits on board, supported by an IPDK, a DPDK, an SPDK and the Intel OFS, all to aid development and programmability. Alternatively, the AMD Xilinx Alveo family includes cards featuring its Vertex FPGA and supported by the Vitus Unified software platform that includes an extensive set of open source performance optimized libraries that offer out of the box acceleration with minimal to zero code changes to existing applications. So there we have it. We hope you found this guide to FPGAs useful. Now, because we understand enterprise workloads are evolving all the time, R3XS servers are configurable with Intel and Nvidia smart NICs, Nvidia Bluefield DPUs, Intel IPUs and AMD Xilinx Alveo FPGAs. Don't hesitate to get in touch though with our system architects or the SCAN IT team to discuss your requirements. And as we mentioned at the start, more videos of this type will be along shortly. So keep your eyes peeled for those and make sure you're subscribed below so you don't miss them.